to our service this week. I'm Pastor Judy Slater of the First Presbyterian Church of Duquesne, Pennsylvania. Our musician is Matt Demas, and our liturgist today is Drew Slater. We have a couple announcements. We would like to start adding to our online services some stories of faith among all of you. So if anybody is willing to submit a, a short video uh, sharing a story of how you have experienced God in your life, we did the Lenten devotional last year, and reading the one that, or ones that you wrote for that devotional would be wonderful, but we'd like to start adding them to the service so that we can start sharing how God is at work in each of our lives and sort of encourage and lift each other up that God is still with us and still at work. Another announcement that on next Sunday, January 17th at noon, we will have a Zoom congregational meeting. And this will be for the purpose of election of officers, our annual congregational meeting, and the installation of officers. We do need a quorum, so we hope you will join us. All I need is your email, and I can send you the Zoom link that you just click on to join the meeting. So make sure I have your email. My email is on our church website and we will get the information about the meeting. And as always, we have a bulletin online for you to follow the, the responsive readings and unison readings. But I was pointed out by a couple people that if you get to our website to find the bulletin and you just uh, scroll down from the main page, the background picture is pretty um, distracting. You have to click on the worship tab at the top and it will come, the bulletin will come up as a, a regular black and white page. So click on the tab, don't just scroll down. Please join me now for the call to worship. Let us worship God. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless God's name. Tell of God's salvation from day to day. Praise the Lord. Let us praise the name of the Lord. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, you sent your Son into the world to show us your love, to reconcile us to you, and to usher in your kingdom. Tell us what you want us to hear. Show us what you want us to do to be your people and give us the courage to follow you that we may experience the abundant life you seek to give us in Jesus. Amen. Let us humble ourselves before God with the confession found in the bulletin. Merciful God, in baptism, you promise forgiveness and new life, making us part of the body of Christ. We confess that we remain preoccupied with ourselves, separated from sisters and brothers in Christ. We cling to destructive habits, hold grudges, and show reluctance to welcome one another. We allow the past to hold us hostage. In your loving kindness, have mercy on us and free us from sin. Remind us of the promises you make in baptism so that we may rise to new life and live together in grace. Amen. In our baptisms, we have been marked by the Holy Spirit and sealed as Christ's own forever. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are loved, we are accepted, and we are forgiven.
if you're watching this. Could be later. Uh, our first reading today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Our New Testament reading is going to come from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. And so, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. This past fall, we thought we might not be able to have our children's Christmas play this year. And Diane and I talked and we decided to try it in a new way and to do it online. And many of you have seen it online. If you haven't, it's still on YouTube. But what we've discovered is that people have enjoyed this new way of doing the play even more than when we did it in church. The children enjoyed being able to sit and watch themselves. We had more freedom to film in other locations. And we got the kids when they weren't sick. Every year at a Christmas play, somebody is not able to fulfill their part because it's the cold and flu season. But this year, they were all able to participate and we did it in a new and creative way. And maybe it will be a new way for us from now on. Maybe we'll do it that way or a combination of the ways next year. But a new thing was open to us in this. I remember the Christmas plays of my childhood. They were nothing like the plays we have here. Usually they were just the nativity and each year you were given a part in the nativity. One year when I was about six years old, we were driving to church for the Christmas play, and my brother, who had just turned five, had trouble remembering his line. So my parents were going over it and over it and over it with him in the car. Well, we get to the Christmas play, I knew my line. We get to the Christmas play, it's my turn to say my line, and I said his line, because that was what was in my head from the car ride to church. I was raised in the church. My home church is Olivet Presbyterian Church of West Elizabeth. I was baptized there, went to Sunday school and worship every Sunday. My father served for years as the treasurer, so we were always one of the first there and one of the last to leave. Sort of nothing has changed in my life now as a pastor. I was uh, did my confirmation, confirming my baptism at age 13, 
And as a young adult, at the age of 25, I was ordained an elder in the church. That seems so young to me now. In fact, there were three of us in that age group that were ordained elders in the church at that time. And the three of us often joke, what were they thinking to ordain three of us in our mid-20s to the leadership of the church? But we're still involved in our church leadership even today. So maybe they knew what they were doing. But up until that point in my life, I, I had an awareness, always had an awareness of God and God's presence. I always had an awareness, a knowledge that Jesus came to, as God's presence to love us and to save us. But up until that point in my life, I prayed that God would help me to do the things I wanted to do, to bless me in the endeavors that I had for my life. It wasn't until I was in my late 20s and experienced a failed marriage and my job was moved out of state that I found myself as an unemployed single mom. And this for me was like the rug being ripped out from under me. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know how to move forward in my life. I felt totally unprepared for life at that point. And that's when I sat down and turned my life fully over to God. Up until then, I prayed that God would help me do what I wanted to do with my life. And I sat down one night and prayed that God would do what God wanted with my life. I prayed for what God wanted for me. Well, I have to tell you, in the year that followed, I do believe in many ways God said to me, look, your life is a gift to you. You have to live it. But we can do this together. And I came to understand that year in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection that new life was real. Not just something that happened to Jesus 2,000 years ago, but new life is real for all of us. I knew, even though I couldn't see how it would work, that God was going to give me new life. And God has blessed me abundantly since then with new life with my family with my ministry i have experienced the power and presence of god in a such greater way in my life through those dark days of my life and seeing god's light shine even brighter in the darkest hours of my life well our passage today Jesus' baptism is a new way for us. Jesus is ushering in the new kingdom of God through his life, death, and resurrection. Prior to Jesus, God's spirit came on certain people at certain times for certain purposes. There were the prophets who spoke, but in Jesus, God came to us in a new and greater way with a new kind of relationship for us. Jesus comes to John the Baptist to be baptized. John the Baptist says in scripture, you should be baptizing me. But Jesus came as God's presence to be in the waters of baptism with us, to be in the waters of humanity with us. And during Jesus' baptism, the Bible says heaven was torn open. The Spirit of God descended upon him, and it looked like a dove. And God's voice said, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Jesus has ushered in a new kingdom of God here and now for us. 
through his life, death, resurrection, and through Pentecost, leaving this outpouring of the Spirit, leaving Christ's Spirit, that we may have a new, greater, more intimate relationship with God. Jesus is the bridge to this new relationship with God. Jesus came to offer us the kingdom of God here and now among us. And that will be fulfilled when, when Jesus comes again. But we can experience it here and now. And this is important for us, especially this year, with all the chaos that is going on right now. The pandemic. It's worse now than it ever was. The vaccines are certainly offering us hope. But I don't know about you, but they're not rolling out fast enough for me. And the fear and the anxiety has, how can we stay safe until we're able to be safe with the vaccine? And then our political unrest. We're seeing things this week and this past fall that we never thought we would see in our country. And throughout this time, we are ever more aware of the racial and social inequity in our society. In many ways, these are dark days, but it is through the dark days that we have an opportunity to see the light of God shining even brighter. It was through my dark days in my life that I came to see God's light and know God's presence in an even greater way. Maybe we can, through this time, come to experience God's presence in an even greater way in our lives and in our world. In Jesus Christ, God came seeking us. Maybe this year our emphasis can be on opening our hearts, our minds, our lives to God's presence, to the encounters with God that God seeks to give us. Let's let 2021 be a year where we intentionally focus on finding God's light, God's presence, God encounters with God in our lives and in our world. God seeks us. Let us seek encounters with God. We, have, we hope in our services to have people sharing stories of faith. We will add them to our regular online services so that we are encouraged to see through their stories how God may be at work in our stories. We hope to intentionally plan some things that will allow us to be more open to God's presence. But I would like to have a, a way for you to start today. We've suggested this in the past, and it might be a good idea to make a point to do this right now. And that is every day, spend two minutes of silence with God. Two minutes of silence. You can spend more. Our youth at Youth Retreat spend 20 minutes of silence, and that can be a very powerful time for them and, and the leaders that go. So feel free to do that. But on a daily basis, make a commitment to spend two minutes. Everybody has two minutes that they can spend. You can even set the timer on your phone. Spend two minutes, not praying, that's a separate, but thinking about God and where God might be in the situations in your life, or the situations in the world. Two minutes a day of silence with God will open us up more to encounters with God. Daily devotions are always a good way to focus our day on God. And we have daily devotion booklets here at church. If you need one, let me know and I'll be happy to get it to you. And of course, there are always online ones that you can get. 
Mary Yearsley has suggested another way. She shared with our Bible study group that this year she is doing an Encounters with God jar. Once a week, she'll sit down and write where she saw God in her life that week. And she'll put it in the, uh, the slip of paper in a jar. And at the end of the year, she'll pull out those papers and sit and read to be reminded of how God was with her and how she was able to experience God's presence throughout the year. So I offer that to you. It's a great idea if you would like to do it. We can experience God in many ways, obviously through scripture, through prayer, through Bible study. All of these ways are, are ways to encounter God, but there are other ways too. God comes to us however we are willing to receive. Some people experience God through nature. Touching nature is an encounter with God for some people. Some people experience God through music. Music can sometimes touch the chords of our soul where words cannot go. So maybe it's through music. Maybe it's through relationships that you have, through your, with your family, with your friends, with your family of faith. There are all sorts of ways that God comes to us. If only we will open our eyes if only we will open our hearts, if only we will open ourselves to seeing the light of God shining in our life and in our world. In Jesus, heaven was open, the Spirit descended, and God's voice spoke. The beginning of a new and more intimate relationship between God and humanity was established. As we start 2021 in these dark days, may the light of God be seen even brighter. And may we experience the power and the blessing of God's presence with encounters with God, assuring us that God is there that God does care, and that God is still in charge. Let us pray. God, please bless us this year with help and with hope, and allow us to see your presence, your light shining in the darkness, that we may know you more, that our relationship with you may grow deeper, and that our faith may grow stronger. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith found in your bulletin. We believe in God who cares enough about creation to enter it, in Jesus Christ, who came among us, remains with us, and is still coming. In the Spirit of God, who speaks through flesh to human flesh. We believe in God's judgment and mercy, God's comfort and challenge, and in God's power to be incarnate in our lives. Let us join our hearts in prayer. O oh God, you have claimed us in baptism and number us among your beloved. Give us power to do your work, to show your love, and to live holy and joyful lives. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal love. Hear our prayers of petition. We pray for comfort for those who are grieving, healing for those who are sick, friendship for those who are lonely, help for those in need, healing for our country, healing from this pandemic, 
and help us all to see your love and presence in our lives and in the world. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. in 2021. And may God go before you to lead you. May God go behind you to protect you. May God go beneath you to support you. And may God go beside you as your friend. 
do not be afraid. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all now, throughout this year, and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.